We've met with many, many, many thousands of millionaires over the years. How did they invest? What are they doing? Well, we suggest, and I personally invest in good growth stock mutual funds. I spread it across four types, growth and income, growth, aggressive growth, and international. And I buy mutual funds that have at least a 10-year track record. Well, Dave, shouldn't you just buy index funds? Well, you can if you want. Index funds, basically an S&P 500 fund, mirrors the market. That basically is the stock market. And so you're going to do exactly what the stock market does, good or bad. The mutual funds that I buy outperform the S&P 500. And they're really not that hard to find. A lot of mutual funds don't outperform the S&P 500. So if you're going to buy that, well, that'd be dumb. Just buy an S&P 500. But I buy mutual funds that outperform the S&P 500. And my portfolio mix that I just outlined is pretty much always beats the market because I buy funds that outperform the market. It's not that hard to do. You open up the prospectus and there's two little lines on the graph. One of them is the S&P 500. If the mutual fund you're looking at, if that line is below that S&P 500 line, don't buy that fund. Duh. This is hard. Really not that much to this. But Dave, you just tell people buy those loaded funds. Yeah, they'll pay a commission. That's fine. Have somebody in your life helping you do the investing. All the data says that you'll continue to invest doing that. But when you're out there by yourself with all your theories, and some idiot newscaster comes on the evening news predicting the end of the world, what do you do? You cash out all your mutual funds at exactly the wrong time because you don't have anybody in your corner saying, don't jump, don't jump. Instead, you're just out there with your own emotions and the newscaster, and that's how you pick out when you jump in or out of the market, and that's just dumb. So all the data says a decent portfolio of good performing mutual funds wins. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Danny. And this is Data Driven Decisions. Today we're going to talk about Dave Ramsey. You know, Dave Ramsey, if you're ever involved in the church, um, you probably know about Dave Ramsey. He's a really great man for personal finance. Um, he is known for his debt snowball and his seven baby steps. And uh, you know what he's great for. You know, if you're somebody in financial trouble and you have a lot of debt, which is probably 85% of all Americans, um, you know, he, he's great to listen to because he's very, he's a great motivator. He'll motivate you to um, pay off your debt using the debt snowball, um, you know, and, and, and it's the old fashioned way. It's going to be by creating a budget and spending as little as you can by getting your side hustle on and trying to make some extra money, maybe be in uh, Uber driver or uh, delivery, uh, just some way to pull in some more money and you just put thousands of dollars towards your lowest debt um, and, and pay it off as quickly as you can. You run with gazelle intensity to do it. And, you know, this is the things he says. And, you know, um, I remember when I was getting out of debt, I was listening to him every day. I was listening to the debt screams. And uh, it was very motivating, and I love that, you know. And, um, you know, uh, you know, I was in a lot of student debt out of college, and then I bought a car, and then I found Dave Ramsey, and I got out of all that debt. Um, you know, I don't follow him to a T. Uh, you know, like you know, seven years later, um, I have debt right now. I have a car loan, and I have some credit card debt, uh, but I don't like it, and. Um, I'm following Dave Ramsey again, uh, you know, to help me get out of that debt. You know, I think I should hold off on, in, on investing right now and just get rid of that debt. You know, my car loan is 11% interest and that's really high. That's, that, that's more than the stock market. So instead of investing, I should be paying off that debt. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm not going to just go from lowest to highest as far as paying off debt. I, I'm going to, attack the one with the highest interest because that's the one i'm paying the most for so you know don't don't go from lowest to highest with your debt just attack the one with the highest interest and uh you know not knock that out so for me you know i've got credit card debt but i'm not paying any interest on it because it's got zero percent apr so why why even pay it i'm just going to pay the minimum until that deadline and then you know in the meantime i'm just going to pay off my car loan you know take big chunks out of that debt and I'll feel good about that because I'll be paying less in principle and I can see that I have that measured. Um, now, there's the other side of investing. Once you get out of debt, you know, Dave Ramsey has invest investing advice. And sadly, 
he leads you to the wolves and it's terrible advice. He tells you to invest in um, active funds uh, managed by people with high expense fees. Uh, you know, he tells you to pay the commissions. Uh, there's a video that I'll share in this video that really broadly explains his advice for investing. And I must say it's, it's terrible advice. So, you know, Dave Ramsey, uh, you know, you should follow him up to his step three of, um, well, yes, I think step three of, uh, you know, step two is getting out of debt. And then step three, you, you build your savings account. And then after that, you just throw Dave Ramsey away. Um, <laughs> because his investing advice is like, um, it's almost like he's paid for by these people, you know, to, you know, he's got a big following and people are listening to what he's doing. And, you know, he's like, it's not hard to find funds that outperform the market. You just look at the perspective and it's there and it's like, no, it's not. And, um, you know, uh, and, and, and that like, you know, you just, you just buy funds that consistently outperform the market. And, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, the assumption is of course, if, if they consistently outperform the market in the past, they're going to do it in the future. I mean, what about reversion to the mean? I mean, that's the truth of, um, investing. I mean, it's not as simple as you, he says it is not at all. Uh, you won't see funds that just out consistently outperform the market. Um, you won't have your hands on those. Um, you know, as a, as a normal investor with just less than a million dollars, you're a nobody and you can't get into those, those big boy funds where, uh, they got all the algorithms, algorithms working for it. And, uh, it turns money into a lot of money. Um, you know, you don't want to invest in active mutual funds. You want to invest in index funds. That's it. Um, that's what Jack Bogle teaches. That's what Warren Buffett teaches. That's what Burton Malkiel, Charlie Ellis, William Bernstein, Richard Ferry, um, they all say the same thing. And it's um, invest in index funds, mostly VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. If you, and then in the world, you want to invest, invest in uh, VXUS, the, the international stock market. And that's it. I mean, uh, I, I do it, you know, more, I, I have some creative ways of which I do investing. I mean, it, it, my, my portfolio isn't that simple. It's all index funds. And I have some portfolios that have maybe 30 uh, different index funds, all with different allocations that I created. Um, I showed you in other videos using the best portfolios of all the top experts and then plotting the risk versus return and then finding the ones with the highest return with the most minimal risk, the ones that are at the threshold of the efficient frontier curve. Um, you know, William Bernstein always talks about that. It's great. Um, so, you know, I don't know what Dave Ramsey's smoking. I don't know what he's not reading. He doesn't, uh, he chooses not to change in his advice, which makes me think he's probably getting commission from the financial uh, institutions to lead people that way. But it's terrible advice. Um, you know, you need to invest in index funds. And, it, and if you don't know anything that you're doing, here's what you do. You just invest all your money in VTI, all of it, and uh, try to just invest as much as you can each month. That will win. That will do better than 80% of people every year. And over 20 years, you will uh, do better than 99% of people. Um, I hope that helps. That's it. You know, like um, when it comes to active mutual funds, first of all, no, they don't outperform the market. Uh, you're just as likely to underperform the market as you are to overperform the market. You got all these active inve investors competing against each other and they have to get the average holistically as a, as, as a whole. And uh, who are you to say who, who's the best and who's the worst to know up front? But anyway, it's a, it's just a random, uh, you know, guess of what, what your return is going to be. And it's going to be, uh, it, with an average of the average, you know, cause it has to be. And, um, you know, what, what you're going to lose is your expense ratio, your three to 4% that is charged for the people to manage the fund, the, all the trading that goes on and all these random stupid fees that they make up that you have to pay. And then it's going to equate to three to 4%. So, you know, the average stock market return is between, um, 
10 and 12 percent okay let's say it's 11 percent well if you're going to do active investing your average is going to be seven percent you're going to consistently underperform the market so if you follow dave ramsey that's what you're going to have happen you're going to not outperform the market you're not going to pick uh, high performing mutual funds like he says is so easy no that's not easy that it, it's not like that um you're just going to uh, underperform the market by your expense ratio and um it's going to suck you know because your money is not going to really grow that much there's a big difference between 11 percent and seven percent huge difference with 11 percent, your money's going to double in less than seven years with seven percent it's going to take over 10 years so um what do you want to do um you know the sad part about the financial industry is that most people are sharks they're they just want to take your money put you in these high cost uh funds that they just take a big chunk out of gradually without you noticing and uh, you get your return it's always going to be less than you know the market average less than the um the expense ratio so consistently less than what you ought to get and um you know they're going to do be doing well uh, but moral of the story don't follow dave ramsey up to step three just knock him out you know uh you know stay out of debt you know don't get into more debt uh you know maybe for good things like real estate you can get into more debt um you know credit card debt you manage it well credit cards are necessary you need credit cards for security for fraud fraud happens all the time people are always after your money uh fraudulent transactions always take place if it's on a credit card you just call the company tell them what transaction it is and it takes it away right away no questions asked if it's on a debit card if it's with a bank then you're probably not going to get your money back so that's the reason number one reason number two is if you uh you know if you if you uh, make a transaction with a bad company something you don't want to do business with again you can always just get a new card and that's really easy um, i guess you can do that with a debit card but um you know debit cards don't protect you against fraud you just want to make all your transactions on credit cards plus you get the rewards you know you get two to five percent rewards on, on on all your transactions uh that's awesome plus you get like a zero percent apr for a long period of time with a credit card and that gives you free money for 15 months i always take advantage of that i'm doing that right now with my fidelity card i just bought it it was great fifteen thousand dollar credit limit two percent cash back on everything uh, i don't have to pay anything for 15 months so i'm just uh spending on that card and then um all my other credit card balances are going to be low and i don't have to pay them much for them and that's going to allow me to grow my checking account uh, so but yeah the video uh the, the moral of the story is don't follow dave ramsey for investing advice you know uh watch the video that i tell he this is what he tells you to do in in the video i'm going to show you and uh it's terrible advice <laughs>